From the Vicky, the 23rd chapter. We're going to get some understanding on why we feasting, what we here for, and then we're going to throw down and enjoy ourselves. That's right. That we don't eat in vain. This ain't the OK Corral, but we are going to feast. All right? Thank you. Make sure everybody gets situated, everybody there. Oh, they getting the babies good over there. Hold on. Happy feast day. Happy feast day. Go ahead and say something. Go Shalom, Israelites. Happy feast day. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with everybody here on this feast day. You know, Shabbat Shalom. It's a beautiful thing. No, it's a beautiful thing to see our people here. You know. So yeah, happy feast day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Use the line, boy. All right, all right, all right. Check this out. Before we get started, we're going to start off with an uh, opening song. Jerusalem is that way, facing the tree right there. We're going to read a song, praise our God. We're going to get it done. All praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All praise. <laughs> the book of Psalms. 132. A psalm of David. A song of degrees. Lord, remember David and all his affliction. How he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty power of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to mine eyelids until I find out a place for Yahweh and habitation. For the mighty God of Jacob, lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacle. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Most High, into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointing. The most I have sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them. Their children also shall sit upon thy throne forevermore. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have, I have ordained a lamp for mine anointing. His enemies will I clothe with shame. But upon himself shall, shall his crown flourish. Hallelujah! Say that! Oh, praise Thank 
court. JB back there. That's it. Yeah, uh, we're gonna, uh, you know, push through this. You know, uh, for those who was at class yesterday, you know, definitely have a great and depth understanding. So it's gonna be on YouTube. Uh, on, uh, are you familiar with the channel? Yeah, and guys, and guys warrior, and guys warrior two nine eight YouTube. So it's gonna be on YouTube. So you know, we're gonna, you know, bring some speech through this, get the understanding on why we're here today. Whoa. We're gonna start in uh, Leviticus chapter twenty three. We headed uh, to verse fifteen. Verse, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15. And ye shall count. Everybody there? Everybody there? You're ready to roll. Right. All right, how we looking? Good. All right, let's get it. Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 15, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. Verse 16 again, even unto the morrow after the Sabbath shall ye number. I mean, Read that again. <laughs> Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. That's what we get. We fifty days or seven weeks pass pass over. The next feast will be what's called Pentecost, meaning count fifty. In Hebrew, is Shabua feast of weeks. Seven weeks gotta pass. So seven times seven, seven days in a week and seven weeks pass. How many days is that? 49. If you add one, that's 50. Pentecost count 50, that's where we at right now. All right, and it was a, uh, a time when we harvested our crops, and then we would thank the Lord for a successful harvest and then throw a feast. See what I'm saying? So what played out in the Old Testament ended up playing out in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. But it was more of a spiritual understanding behind it. It wasn't just strictly about you harvesting grain and crops. It was more about people coming into the understanding or being harvested into the belief of Christ. All right, come on, bro. Read that. Verse 17. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loads of two, I mean, of two tent deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Now, when you're dealing with harvest time, when it was time for harvest, when you pick your crops, the first fruits will be the best of your pickings. The first pickings, that's offered as a thank you offering to God. A first fruit. So if it's time for you to harvest a whole field of corn, the first ears of corn that's ripe, and that's the best stock of corn, that get picked and offered to God. He don't get scraps. That's right. He get the best. That's right. Right, so it's called first fruits. It's another name for this: feast of weeks, <coughs> Pentecost, or feast of first fruits. All right, come on, brother. Verse eighteen. Yeah. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offerings. Even an offering made by fire of sweet savior unto the Lord. We always was uh doing what this brother's doing back here. <laughs> Offerings made by fire, what you think that means? We was killing. <laughs> <laughs> These brothers of the Hebrews of the feast that they grill. But that's what that means. An uh, offering made by fire, we was grilling. That's, that, that's why you love the grill, is, is we, we the people of the book, in other words. That's right. We always been like that. Oh, yeah, and then let them know, too, because the blood and everything drips away from yeah. it. All drips away yeah, from yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. They thin and all that. Much better than uh, flat grilling or bacon. When you open grill your meat, the blood from the meat drop down on the coals. So it's cooking the blood of out the meat. You see what I'm saying? So that's how we always got down. You wonder why. And Negroes always barbecue. Right. It's in your blood. It's in the Bible. Offerings made by fire. Right. Unto the Lord a sweet savor. That's right. All right. What verse you mm -hmm. in, brother? Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Then shall you sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, 
and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice, a peace offering. Now, when you get the understanding of who Christ really is, you understand he fulfills all these offerings that they literally were doing in Leviticus and all that. He's the ultimate offering, unblemished lamb that God has accepted. Now, he'd rather you obey his word and kill some animals. Ain't nobody killing animals no more anyway. You'd be locked up and you'd be like, okay, brother, I sinned today. I'm going to kill some bullocks. Or it ain't happening. And then what priest are you taking it to? Right. So the Lord himself, Christ himself, was a sacrifice fulfilling all. The per his blood was unblemished. So anybody up under that blood would be covered. See what I'm saying? So everything we did literally is killing animals was only a symbolic form of Christ coming to be the ultimate sacrifice. That's what they're talking. So you won't find brothers killing rams and lambs back here. One of y'all, I don't know, you killed the lambs this year, brother? No, no we went to the store and bought that meat right. and these turkey burgers and all that. But the sacrifices represent Christ. That's right. So if you believe in the Messiah, you can feast with us. If you don't, you should leave. That's right. That's right. All right, brother, come on. Real quick, uh, I'm just going to pull this script. Uh, 1 Peter uh, 1.19, uh, tied to what brother was saying. It says, uh, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's right. So clearly we see that Christ is that unblemished lamb. So yeah, we're not killing lambs over here. <laughs> Verse 20. It says, and the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy unto the Lord for the priest. Verse 21. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be in holy convocation. Today is special. You feel me? Ain't nothing to play around with. Today is special. This is what all the righteous men and women of the Most High did. They observed what he told them to do. What about the your feeling? Oh, I, brother, I feel and, and I think and the butterflies. It wasn't about all that. It was about what saved the Lord. That's all it's ever been about. What would Jesus do? He always was quoting scripture. He said, what does say of the scripture? How are you reading the scripture? Never gave you an opinion, none of that. Told you what the scripture said. So who do you follow? Christ kept these ordinances. We ought to be doing the same thing. All right, come on, brother. Verse 21 again. And you shall proclaim on the self-same day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. In all your dwellings throughout your generations, huh? Mm. So that means forever, ever. You're supposed to remember the ordinances of the Lord. All right, today we grow up with customs that we don't even know why we do. We just do it. Mm. What you do it for? Why? Where you learning from? Where you coming? Well, mama told me. What she learning from? Her mama told her. What does it mean, though? You don't even know. Is it in the Bible, the very book? You say the word of God? What Would Jesus be doing this? Or would he be doing what's in the scripture? It's all it come down to. Are you the servant of men or the servant of the Lord? It's all it come down to. All right, and read that about the Pentecost out of there too. Let's get some understanding. Quote that source right there. All right, uh, this is uh, Holy Quick Source Bible Atlas. With charts and biblical uh, reconstructions, you can get this on Amazon for about a dollar thirty-five cents. It's really cheap. Packed with information. Yeah. So uh, on page uh, one twenty-seven, under the uh, Feast of Pentecost, under significance, it says, commemorates the giving of the law at Mount Sinai, includes a day of first fruits for the wheat harvest. For the wheat harvest. So today commemorates us getting the law from God on Mount Sinai. Right. It also commemorates Acts chapter 2. Like we got a fiery law from God. In Exodus, we got fiery tongues from the Lord in Acts 2. Mm -hmm. Now these tongues are not what you see in the, the, the comedian reel on BET when you look at the black church. The black church today is displayed as a, as a comedian type thing. It's not taken serious. So when you see tongues in the scripture, it's not talking about I should have bought a Honda, Honda, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Van Damme, a shoo boo 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 ain't talking, ain't talking about that all, if, if you just keep reading. The people that push that doctrine cut you off at verse 4. 
But it get explained down in verse 11. Yeah. So if you never read down, you never understand you never what know. this was about. You never know. Exactly. See what I'm saying? That's why the scripture says study to show yourself That's That's right. You need to be getting this. Yeah. All right, so let's get into this, brother. You read that right there. Uh, let's get into Exodus 23 real quick. Yeah. And then we'll jump over to the New Testament and show you what was being observed. And if you really want to get an in, in detail breakdown of what we went over in class yesterday, it'll be online shortly. Sit on down in your slippers, drinking your Folgers. <laughs> Real man, and sit down, take notes. Take notes. So I'll praise the most high. Ain't nothing else special. It's, it's His word. It's been heard. Uh, he says so much. Written on the heavenly tablet. The Lord don't need us. We need Him. Right. 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 All right. Let's get it, brother. Where you at? Exodus 23, verse 14. Yeah. Starting uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 23. Starting verse 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Those that, that fellowship, those that fellowship with us know we already kept that feast. Feast of unleavened bread is Passover. Fifty days ago. Roughly fifty days ago, we kept that feast. Alright, come on, brother. Verse 15 again. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I command thee, in the time appointed of the month of beer. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year thy male shall appear before the Lord God. So that's where we had the feast after the unleavened bread, the feast of first fruits of thy labors. Remember, we was farmers back in the day. The Bible called them husbandmen. You used to plant seeds, right? You used to watch your seeds grow till it was time to pick them. And at harvest time, you separated the good crops from the bad crops. Bad crops you burned, good crops you kept. So what you did on a day-to-day -day basis and year-to-year -year was symbolic for the judgment of the Lord. That's what the Lord going to do when he returns. He's going to separate the good from the bad, burn the bad, keep the good. Mm. Just that simple. Show right. So this was the harvest time for us, but on a spiritual level, it's harvest time spiritually. You feel me? Like it's time for us to get back to what the Lord said. Later for all the commandments of men, I mean, they're going to be here, they heard, you know, Click at a ticket, stop at the red light course. Right? But what's gonna get you eternal life? You need to be paying more attention to that than what somebody when well, somebody said I thought you seen him doing with the later for all that. What does say of the scripture? Alright, now let's get into this right here. We did the Exodus 23, right? Let's jump up to Acts chapter 2. No, Acts 1. Read Acts 1 first. Acts 1, 1 through 11. Show you how the Lord hung out with us 40 days after he resurrected. Almost to Pentecost, and then he ascended. So, when somebody calls themselves Pentecostal, they're calling themselves a feast day. <laughs> Pentecost, the feast of weeks, feast of first fruits is a feast day. You can't call yourself a feast day. That's not a nationality. It's a feast day of God. Now you saying, I'm a tabernacle. I'm a tabernacle. I'm a, I'm a tabernacle. I'm an unleavened bread. Yeah, Pentecost is a feast of God. You weren't about to take a feast of God and, and, and label yourself. All right? Acts chapter 1, start at verse 1. Acts chapter 1 verse. All this got to do with the resurrection of the Lord Christ. And now he hung out with his disciples 40 days after his resurrection. And then he ascended. He told them don't leave Jerusalem until this day right here. So it's a serious thing. Go ahead, brother. One, verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began 
taught to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. See, the Lord gave commandments even after his resurrection. He didn't give a religion or a philosophy. He gave commandments, orders. We as servants and followers of him are under orders. All right, come on, brother. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, mm. being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he was seen by his disciples and them for 40 days, and for them 40 days he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. After his resurrection. What do we mean by his passion? His crucifixion. Yeah. His crucifixion. All right, come on, brother. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. See, so John's baptism, water baptism, Christ's baptism, fire and spirit. Two different baptisms. You, you read it today and think it's just talking about going into some water, but it's a, it's a much deeper spiritual connection behind it. Right? So we like, look, you already been dunked by water, but not many days after this 40 days he hung with him, will ye be baptized by the Holy Ghost. All right, come on, brother. <coughs> when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, mm. saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The disciples understood the prophecies. Israel gets the kingdom of heaven. They are the future rulers of planet earth. Even the disciples asked them, is this the time? Is this when we get everything we prophesied about? How did the Lord respond? Come on, brother. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men by them in white apparel, which also say, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Mm -hmm. Then returned they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, were abode both Peter and James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, and Martha, and and Matthew, James, the son of Alephius, and Simon, Zalot, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. All right, come over to Acts chapter 2. Just setting the groundwork leading up to this 50th day after Passover. Christ hang out with the disciples 40 days. Spoke to them about the kingdom of heaven. Then he was taken up into what, what the scriptures call a cloud or a chariot of God. And taken up out of Elijah, same thing. Taken up into a cloud, a fiery chariot. Psalms 104, the clouds of the, uh, of the Lord are his chariots. Feel you know I me? Mean? Chariots, a vehicle of transportation. See what I'm saying? The, the Lord got vehicles as well. Today they'll say UFO, but they don't say it in the scripture. It's called chariots of God. That's what he was taken up into. So it's not nothing spooky or spookisms. It is what it is. All right, Acts chapter 2, brother. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house 
where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, anybody dealing in the Pentecostal doctrine will stop you right at that verse right there. Close the book and tell you what they tell you. Never let nobody do that to you. Keep reading. Because it got to be explained. What is a cloven tongue of fire? If I leave it to anybody's opinion, it could be anybody's opinion. It could be, oh, that's my big mama over there off the north side. Oh, Kasu. She, she that cloven tongue of fire. Right, she cussed right. me out yesterday. Right. <laughs> Right. Go ahead, brother. Read the definition of tongues. The definition of tongues out of the Zodovic Compact Bible Dictionary. Uh, the definition of tongues, it says a language or dialect. And it says a people or race having a common language. Now, trip about this language, dialect. Right? That's an established language. If you look in the front of most of y'all Bibles in here, it'll say translated out of the original tongues. So the tongues ain't you uttering something you don't know what you're talking about. It's speaking the, the uh, glorious work of the Most High in another language. Right. You start speaking it in Spanish or Hebrew or Greek or, or whatever, whatever language out there. Whatever the Russians speak, whatever. That's what the tongue is. The tongue is a language. Paul spoke with tongues. He spoke several languages. Hebrew, Greek, Latin. You know what I'm saying? So the tongues is not the doctrine you see today. You just start uttering something. Thank you, Jesus, till you say I want some cheeses. And then that ain't what it is. We're going to keep reading and see. See, it'd be different if we just sat up here and said that in y'all laugh. No, we're going to let the script explain. And then it's your job to pull that out. No, no, don't stop me at verse 4, big mama. Let's keep reading. Get some understanding real quick. Right. All right, come on, brother. Now, so to add to that uh, biblical uh, definition of tongues, uh, you can write down Acts 21 and 40, uh, Acts 22, verse 1, and uh, Ezra chapter 4, verse 7. All right, uh, so pick it back up in uh, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Verse 6. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, were well, you guess what you getting out of that, brother? You getting that. Y'all just heard what they just said. Everybody heard them speak in their own language. No, well, that's what you wanted to mean, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you wanted to be. Now say we were polite like that with everything. Right? One plus one is two. Fact. Huh? I'm gonna step up and say it's three. No. And that's the way I look at it. How you gonna tell me it's wrong? <laughs> Put that on a test in school. See what you get, you gonna fuck out. I look at it like this. So how come we can't answer like that in our corner? everyday thing we do, but when it comes to this, the spiritual book of the Most High, we feel we can answer like that. Yeah. And say, well, that's what I feel it right. is. Yeah. yeah. But you can't say that. Go to school and say that. That's right. Tell the teacher, this is what I feel it is. <laughs> and if it ain't the truth according to what it is, you're going to fly. You're going to go. Tell the judge. <laughs> Tell the judge, tell the judge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Right. Watch them boys close. So it's so tongues or another language. All right, come on, bro. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? Galileans over in Israel. The men that speak were speaking Hebrew. So we say, ain't all these men Galileans? These was Hebrews. Right? Keep reading. Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue mm. wherein we were born? That's the question. How do we hear what they saying in the tongue we was born in? Right. The tongues is another language. You're speaking the gospel in another language. An established language. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, bro. Verse 9. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, 
and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea, in Cappadocia, in Pontus, in Asia, Pergidia, whatever, Fergie. that too, Fergie, <laughs> I ain't bad up here, <laughs> and, 